Foxfire is a modular blaster system that is designed uh, to be built with community parts. Um, it's broken up into three uh, components as far as putting the blaster together. You have a motor housing, you have a receiver, and you have a core. And there are various modules that you can mix and match to kind of put together the, the, the blaster that you want. Um, so leveraging on community community parts, it takes a strife cage, and for people that are in the mod community, you know that there are a lot of options up there. So the mounting points, the everything that going into that is a, a strife cage, so that you can pick a worker cage, you can pick an open flywheel cage, you can get a containment crew cage, you can get pretty much whatever flywheel cage, uh, flywheels, motors, and then builds on it, fits 180s for uh, some of the uh, motor housings. Um, it's got a full auto back end, it's got a semi auto back end, uh, takes regular magazines, uh, set up to take katana magazines, um, you, know, you got your attachment points, your stock attachment points, everything. So the idea is that it's a modular blaster, but it's a modular blaster that can be built with community sourced parts. Now, the 1.3 release features uh, a couple of new hands. It's mostly an iterative, uh, so it's a lot of structural changes, uh, small minor model changes and things like that. But the two big things that jump out uh, for 1.3 uh, is I've brought back the, the P housing. And I really did not like the P housing. It was the first housing that I did. Uh, back with the, even with the 1.0 model with the 1.1, I was just not happy with the way the thing together. So I took it back to the drawing board and completely redesigned the P housing. And this here, you can see on the front of this blaster, is uh, what I ended up with. So what I wanted to do, especially with the housings, is I wanted to kind of differentiate them and differentiate what they do. Um, I didn't want them to be a short a medium and a long housing but I wanted more aspects to them so the idea between behind the P housing is that it's compact I also made it thinner and you can see down the line if you compare it to the, to the width of this is the G housing uh, you compare it down to the width of that it is quite a bit thinner so it's a trade-off you can't use 180 motors you gotta use 130s or 132s with that I also kinda went for more of a skeletal look uh, to get a different look and feel, more of an angle to it, shorter barrel, you know, to kind of make it a good uh, pistol type of um, motor housing. Uh, so it's a trade-off, but it's also it's an aesthetic. It makes it shorter, makes it more easier to wield. And uh, by the way, I've got this put together with a katana mag, and I'm going to talk about this blaster specifically in, in a later video. I got to run this thing in, in a war this weekend, and ooh, ooh. It was it, it performed very very well. I was I was shocked, very impressed by um, uh, the capabilities with this, specifically running worker short darts. Well, the other big change aesthetically uh, is the uh, the G how motor housing, and I ended up here deciding you know what this is going to be the housing where you put your tactical rails, you you put your attachments on. So I ended up adding a tack rail to the top and to the sides, you want to mount a camera, you want to mount some kind of an optic up here, that, that the G housing is the one that's going to be focused on um, you know, kind of being more of, of a, a tactical like, um, have, a, have a tactical aspect to it so that you can, you, know, you can mount your different pieces. You've got the rails back here on both of the cores, but this you know, adds tactical rails to that and, and that's kind of new for the one thing. I, I've not been uh, huge on putting lots of tactical rails on it. And uh, for the for the 1.3 model, I decided you know, the G housing was going to be the place where these uh, rails would be added in. So beyond that, the changes to 1.3, I said they're kind of structural. I'm learning 3D modeling, and I'm learning 3D printing, and I'm and, uh, as I'm I'm growing on it. And one of the things I found is I, I really with this I understood what a non manifold. Uh, geometry was and how to make geometries manifold that aren't. So there's a lot of changes in the models uh, that clean up a lot of that non-manifoldness that was that was kind of in there. And I know if you've looked at some of them, you kind of load them up. There was some Z fighting in some places. There were some parts of the models that were just a little bit uh, they, they they didn't feel right. They they would print. Uh, the slicer could correct the errors and they would print. 
Um, but I went through and, and cleaned up the models. I also added a lot some structural changes, enhancements, some reinforcements, made things um, kind of come together a little bit bigger or a little bit better. Uh, changed very slightly, still compatible with the old ones, but changed slightly how the hook and latch system works to make that a little bit uh, structurally more um, more robust. Before it was, it was very functional and it was sturdy and I, I wanted to even make it a little bit more than that. Um, so anyways, this here is um, the Foxfire Release 1.3, the model set. Uh, down in the description below I'll have a link to my Google, Google Drive where I have all the Blender files and all the SDL files uh, that if you want to go and take and, and print and build this uh, yourself. Um, so if you do, uh, that would be awesome. I, I, I love to hear feedback from people that have actually taken uh, one of these and put it together. So if you do get one and, and you do decide to print it, let me know and just let me know how it goes. And if you have feedback, positive, negative, uh, ask that, uh, you know, pass that on because I'm always looking to make these things better. So anyways, this is Foxfire MBS release 1.3. Thanks for watching.